Last keynote speaker, last but not least, that's Harold Batista. Harold comes from a very prominent and entrepreneurial family, the Batista family, that of course includes Eliezer Batista, the founder of Vale do Rio Doce, and uh, of course Ike Batista, the founder of uh, EBX Group. So I invited uh, uh, Harold here because of course he's from Rio de Janeiro and he's going to talk about how the city is preparing to uh, is getting prepared to host the Olympic Games in 2016. Harold, muito obrigada. Thank you for being here. Can you guys hear me? Can everybody in the back hear me? It's great. So uh, let me go ahead and actually uh, prepare a little presentation for you guys. So let me start. And uh, I hope the sound is working. If not, I'll just make it. I'll, I'll fix it. Rio de Janeiro. Can you not see it? It's a great victory for South America and the global south. And on the crowded beaches of Rio, there was immediate rejoicing and relief. Cariocas, as the city's inhabitants are known, are now preparing to party through the weekend. The announcement followed an impassioned plea by Brazil's President Lula da Silva to the delegates to allow his country in South America to post the Olympics for the first time, redressing what he called an imbalance that has seen the games go only to countries in Europe, North America, and Asia. Our time has come. Among the top ten economies in the world, Brazil is the only country that has not hosted the Olympics and the Paralympic Games. Among the countries that they compete to host the Games, we are the only ones who have never had this honor. For the other countries, it will be one more Olympiad. For us, it will be an unparalleled opportunity. <laughs> In Madrid, which lost to Rio in the final round, there was disappointment at missing the prize two attempts in a row. Chicago, which was eliminated in the first round of voting, was stunned. President Barack Obama had made a late push to help the city's case. I urge you to choose Chicago. I urge you to choose America. And if you do, if we walk this path together, then I promise you this, the city of Chicago and the United States of America will make the world proud. But not even his presence was enough to convince the delegates. But in Brazil's most scenic and fun-loving city, not only joy and enthusiasm, but also a conviction that being awarded the Olympics is a recognition that Brazil has finally gained the respect of other nations. Respect that it has coveted for so long. Roger Wilkerson, Al Jazeera. I'm so I'm super excited to uh, for the Olympics in Rio de Janeiro in the next couple of years and what I like to do today is share with you guys some ideas so that you guys have no more excuses not to go to Rio I'd like to see a show of hands how many of you have gone to Rio so far how, how many people have been there Wow look around how many people have not been to Rio Okay, by the end of this, by, this, by the end of this next 30 minutes, I want to take all your excuses out of your way, and I wanted you to schedule in your uh, schedule book there to be in Rio in the next four years. Okay, my goal once again is to get you guys to see you guys all again in Rio. Yeah, do I have a show of hands? You guys excited about that? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a couple of stories, uh, and these stories, my intent is to get you guys excited about Brazil. And those stories will, those are personal stories, family stories, and uh, as you hear those stories, you'll see a common thread, and that thread is success. We had a lot of success, my family in Brazil, you can have that success as well. Uh, first of all, I live, I've been living in the Silicon Valley for the last 21 uh, years, and I live in uh, uh, Los Altos Hills, just 10 minutes uh, south of here. And this is a shirt that I'm very, very proud of. It's the Stanford Blood Center shirt. 
And this is, I've, I'm working now on my 16th gallon of blood, and so I didn't do this all at once. I've been doing this for the last 20 years. So they always ask me to recruit new souls to donate blood. So please go ahead and uh, go to the Stanford Blood Center. It's great for you, but it's also great for your fellow human beings. The other thing you see too, soccer balls. Of course, I'm from Brazil and we love soccer. This will be the price for an easy question. If you pay attention, at the end of 30 minutes, I'll, I'm going to ask you guys an easy question, and this is going to be a price. So get excited. A, a, a soccer ball straight from Target, okay? And uh, this one is going to be the price for you for the difficult question, okay? So pay close attention. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you a story of how Rio won the Olympics. And the way it's gonna work is the following. Can you guys all see this here on, your, on the chart? What we're going to do, I'm going to tell you a story starting in October 2009. You just saw when Brazil, when it was announced that Brazil won the Rio Games. What I'm going to show you guys now is the video that those people in Denmark saw by the Brazilian delegation. You saw our president saying that the Olympics has never, have never happened in South America. Now let's take a look at this presentation that the Brazilian gave to 124 people of the IOC, the International Olympic Committee. And then afterwards, I'll ask you if you guys would have found that Rio was a compelling case. This presentation is one minute and 42 seconds, so let's go. President, the Minister of Sport, Rio's governor and mayor and city's mayor. We were all part of the same team that delivered the 2007 Pan and Parapan American Games. Personally, I have seen wonderful Olympic and Paralympic Games in Europe, in Asia, in Oceania, and in North America. And I'm looking Looking forward to Vancouver next year, London 2012, and Sochi in 2014, which will mean that in modern Olympic history, there have been 30 games in Europe, five in Asia, two in Oceania, and 12 in North America, including eight in the United States. Now, we want to bring the games to South America for the first time and open the door to a new country, one that stands ready to take the Olympic movement forward in new territories and in new cultures and people. And thanks to the character and the spirit of real, new energy. The games are most magical where the whole city contributes new ingredients. Let me give you a taste of what Rio offers. Raise your hand if you found it was a compelling presentation. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you found it compelling. Raise your hand. Look around you. Look around you. I've shown this video to over 3,000 people in the last four years worldwide in Qatar, in Europe, in Mexico, Brazil. The reactions are always the same. 80% to 90% found this compelling. Why was this compelling? What was compelling about it? Someone. What was so compelling about it? First time in South America. First time in South America. What else was compelling about it? Get data to back it up. What else? The graphics. the graphics. Who thinks that they would have not been as successful if they didn't use those graphics? Raise your hands. There you go. So the reason why I point this out to all of you is because of the following. This presentation was no accident. And uh, here's why it was no accident. Let me tell you the story behind this presentation. My brother, Ike, here he is, he's signing a check to the governor of Rio, Sergio Cabral. This is a check for $13 million. This was designed to help the Olympic 
effort to gain the city to Rio. If anybody recalls 2009, Rio was not exactly a perfect city, right? It was quite, there were quite some issues in the cities. The drug lords were owning the city, and I was like even surprised that we were running for the Olympics. Like, you guys are crazy, right? Competing against Chicago. Chicago was the absolute favorite. Now what happened though? That check of $13 million went to this group here in England. My brother said, look, we've been trying to win the Olympics for the last 30 years or however long. And so what we need is expert, uh, expert advice. So what we did is then we went to London and told the English folks, how did you guys win the Olympics for London? London was supposed to have been won by Paris. And what the English people said, $13 million. So <laughs> that was it. Those $13 million went to the folks in, in England. So they got some return for their Olympics. And what did they do? They crafted that message that you guys experienced. That presentation was designed by the English. Did it work? Absolutely. This was messaging at its best. When you saw President Lula speaking, he's had the same messages that uh, the fellow that you just saw speak. When you saw Sergio Cabral speak, it was always the same message. We already ran the Pan American Games, never in Brazil, and look at that super energy we have here in South America. Right? It was a very effective sales campaign. And what was the success? Well, you saw it. Let me tell you then the reason why I share this story is because here's a great example of government working with private industry, working with the best of the best in the world to achieve a result, right? Isn't that a great formula for success? In other words, when you want to achieve something, what do you have to do? Look for the best. Look for the best wherever in the world, bring them together, and with the right intention, with the right efforts, your success will increase. Now, what I want to do now is I want to share with you a little bit about my brother, for those of you who don't know him. What you will see is a little bit of like a three-minute story about him and how he achieved success in Brazil. Let's take a look at that. He was one of seven. He learned the importance of sharing. With his mother, he cured his asthma with discipline, swimming in the cold water. With his father, he learned to think big. He moved to Germany, Belgium, and Switzerland. When he was 18, his family moved back to Brazil. He was left with his oldest brother and half the money. He started to sell insurance policies from door to door. When he was 23, he read in a Brazilian magazine about the gold rush in the Amazon region. So he went there. Two jewelers had lent him $500,000 to buy gold there. After 15 months, he traded $60 million and made a $6 million profit. $6 million, 23 years old. He should have gone to the beach, right? Wrong. Instead, he decided to build a crazy machine in the middle of the Amazon. His instinct helped him to find a rich mine among more than 100 mines. To produce gold in the middle of the jungle, you almost need a military operation to supply food, water, energy, fuel. You need to put into practice a holistic view. So he put 11 gold, silver, and iron ore mines into production from scratch. From 1980 until 2000, he went worldwide. $20 billion of wealth created for investors, and $1 billion left for him. He learned very important lessons. How do I To integrate projects, arbitrage inefficiencies, be self-sufficient. What we have always done, and are still doing, is large-scale, long-lasting, efficient, state-of-the-art, transformational, responsible. Since 2000, he decided to focus on Brazil, to build a new Brazil, because he loves his country and his people. Great to see you.
see you. I enjoyed that video so much because it showed you really when you first started out and how you embarked on a career and kept going. How tough was that? Um, well, it was tough. <laughs> first of all, thank you for having me. Very nice, pleasure. Um, but I guess education forges you. And, uh, so um, this is a great video, watch it and tell the rest. For those of you guys who want to go to Brazil, there are some great invitations for all of you to come to Rio. Why? Because as you heard, we need you guys. You guys are the best of the best in the world, so we need you guys to have even more success in Brazil. We really have a shortage of people. Of just about every four resumes we put out, we only get one to respond. So there's a big fight for talent, as you heard today, quite a bit. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to you know, go just a little bit to now the, the creation of the World Cup, what I want, uh, not the World Cup, but the Olympics. What I'm gonna show you is the current status of the, the building for the Olympics, but not just for the Olympics. Who knows what's gonna happen in two years in Brazil? And what's happening in one year? Who can tell me? It's Configurations Cup, right? So let's just take a look at a couple of pictures. One of the pictures that I'd like to share with you guys is this one here. This is the Maracanã Stadium. They're completely rebuilding it. As you can see, uh, they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars and it will be ready before next year. So that's one of your first excuses to come to Rio. Before this, by the way, there's Carnival, right, in January. So make sure that you put this on your calendar too. A couple of other pictures, as you can see, there's a lot of construction going on in Rio. It's really transforming. This is for the underground. For anyone who likes undergrounds in Europe, you'll love our undergrounds in Brazil as well, right? Because you'll be able to move in an incredible, great way through the subways. The investments are over $15 billion, just in infrastructure for the city. The biggest story of Rio, though, is what? It's oil. Over the next four years, I think the investments are in the neighborhood of $200 billion. So it's a happening city, you got to be there, it's a lot of fun, right? So uh, there are a lot of other pictures I could show you, but just for the, to, to show you how this is all going to look like at the end, let's take a look four years into the future and see how this is all going to come about. As London prepares to say goodbye to the world, all lives will now shift to Rio de Janeiro. In four years' time, the Brazilian city will be the first in South America to ever host the Olympics. Since the bid was awarded in 2009, work has already begun to make the city ready for the Games. The venues will be located in four clusters around the historic city, all connected by a series of high-speed rail routes and those infamous Olympic lanes. Much of the action will be centered in Bada, where the Olympic Park will be. More than half of the events will be staged in Bada, where construction on venues began in June. The Athletes Village will also be here, complete with its very own private beach just for competitors. The historic Maracana Stadium will be home to the opening and closing ceremonies, as well as Brazil's favorite pastime, football. Sambo Dromo, which is home to Rio's carnival, will be transformed to host the marathon and archery events. The Copacabana District will be sure to be one of Rio's most popular landmarks. What better place for beach volleyball than this world-famous stretch of sand? Sugarloaf Mountain will also be the backdrop for the sailing events. Tens of billions of dollars are being poured into the city to make it ready for 2016, but Rio needs to get some things done even earlier. Brazil is hosting the World Cup in 2014. Now that's what I call a dress rehearsal. Phil Hoff, CNN, London. All right, you guys are all excited, right? So thanks to England for this here because uh, this is going to be a lot of very exciting events coming into Rio. So let me just remind you guys, just do a recap of what you've just seen. Number one, uh, the first excuse to go to Rio is Carnival 2013. And then we have the Confederations Cup, which is it's a dress rehearsal for the World Cup in 2013. And the third excuse is Carnival 2014. Right? And then the World Cup in 2014, and then two more carnivals, and then we got the Olympics. <laughs> Do you guys need any more excuses? <laughs> Put it in your schedule now. <laughs> All right, uh, just to finalize, this is just, I'm almost done here with my presentations. I'd just like to share with you guys a couple of other thoughts about my family. I talked, you guys uh, got to learn a little bit about Ike. There's a big book here later if you want to see. This is about EBX. EBX is a very vast conglomerate, uh, the biggest company within uh, uh, 
EBX is a company called OGX. It's oil and drilling. We're a private Brazilian uh, oil company. We're very excited about it because we're the first ones in Brazil to have an oil company along with Petrobras. The other companies are MMX, LLX, OSX. Everything ends up with an X. And the reason for that is because that's wealth multiplier, right? Trust me, like Felipe said, Felipe, I mean, how about a round of applause for Felipe for what he said, yes? A round of applause for Felipe. He, he's got the attitude, that positive go-win attitude. Trust me, I've been living here in the United States for a long time. I've been going to Rio every two to four times every year since then. Uh, Rio's the place to be, Brazil's the place to be. Why? Many reasons. Lots of carnival, but more important than this, <laughs> More important than this, remember, it's a thriving democracy, just like the United States. It's a balance. We, the, the United, the, Brazil has a surplus, right? I believe it's over, how much is it, $300 billion in the banks for Brazil? It's over $300 billion. I remember in 1995, not only was the inflation sky high, but we owed the world $200 billion. And I remember thinking, oh my god, $200 billion, we're never going to get out of this. Now look today, $300 billion. So when I look at $16 trillion in debt, uh, so what? Just think about 10 years from now, it's going to be all surplus. Have a positive view on things, right? So you guys saw a little bit about Ike. The other person I'd like to mention here is my father. I consider him another legend. His name is Eliezer Batista. He created a, a company called Vale do Rio Doce. Originally it was Vale do Rio Doce. Nowadays it's called Va uh, Vale, right? The stock symbol is V-A-L-E. They, uh, they, their profits last year was 22 plus billion dollars. It's not bad, right? During times in Brazil that weren't so easy as you saw the inflation. So success can happen anywhere, anytime. I'd like to leave you guys with a couple of thoughts. I asked Ike a couple of years ago, Ike, where's the best opportunity to invest now? And he told me, right here, right now, where it's always been. And I thought about this, wow. Because it's been in Brazil for like 33 years. It took him that long, right? It takes a long time until you're successful. But the message there was wherever you are, that's where there will be success for you. A couple of other things. This is from my sister, Dr. Magalhães. He worked with my father for a long time. He's the vice, he was the vice president for Webbechtel. My sister has a company here in the United States. See, we're Brazilians are entrepreneurial here in, in the United States. She lives in Los Gatos. And what this here is called is called uh, Money Snacks. Go to moneysnacks.com. It's an advertising for her. This is a delicious Brazilian cheese bread. Who likes cheese bread from Brazil? You guys all love it? Go buy it. <laughs> and then finally, last but not least, what else do I have? Just one more thing. This picture here that you guys just saw of Rio, it's from one another of my brothers. His name is Helmut. And what he is, this picture that you're about to see, those are 360 degree view pictures, uh, which you can, you'll, when you're in Rio, you'll see a lot of these books at the stores, okay? So keep in mind, I'm advertising for all my brothers here. The other two work at EBX, actually the other three work at EBX. Uh, one big deal that we closed this week was a very exciting one for us. You guys all know the Cirque du Soleil? We closed the deal with Cirque du Soleil on Wednesday, which means, all the shows, like the next Michael Jackson, is going to be in Rio next year, right? It's a big deal for us. We were very excited about this. So, one more reason for you guys to go to Rio, right? If you don't like it in Las Vegas, come to us to Rio. And uh, now, the moment you guys have been all waiting for. Question, the easy questions. And you guys are all super bright students, right? There's a reason you guys are all here at Stanford. What is happening next summer in Brazil? The reason you need to be there. Okay, no, not summer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm talking about the U.S. summer. Good question. The U.S. summer. Configurations. Actually, hold on. Was that the easy question? That was the difficult question. That was the easy question. What's that? No, actually, you know what? I just confused this thing. That was the uh, difficult question. So you deserve. You deserve this ball. So a round of applause for him. There you go. All right. Now this is the easier question. What's happening in the year 2014? Who said that? <laughs> I'm just going to throw it back. Whoever gets it. There you go. Round of applause for you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Harold. Evan, please come right here, join me. And uh, we have a couple, of, I'm sure some people have questions for you. And I want to start with Ron Zerny, he has a question. Ron Zerny, CEO of uh, uh, Playphone, Bay Brazil board member. Thank you. This was by far the most entertaining presentation. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So it was a good show. Thank you. You've been 
<laughs> You've been here for a long time in Silicon Valley. You've been donating blood for the past 20 years. Yes, go donate black guys, everyone. So how about, I haven't seen yet a VC firm established by Brazilians in the Silicon Valley focused in helping Brazilian founded companies to develop business worldwide. I've seen this uh, during the dot-com boom, SoftBank, Japanese companies came, established VC firms, focusing on bringing business to Japan and across the globe. I'm seeing right now in the past five years, Chinese companies doing the same thing and bringing businesses. But I haven't seen Brazilians establishing VC firms in the Valley, boosting Brazilian entrepreneurs to build businesses globally. How about that? <laughs> You've been donating blood for 20 years. How about <laughs> donating a little bit more blood <laughs> for the fellow Brazilians? Ricardo, where's Ricardo? I brought Ricardo here. He's a, he's a, he's a great guy. And he's, he's part of it. No, he's part of it. He's already there. That's why he's here. You know, um, the answer, let me just give you a couple of ideas about IQ, right? I mean, uh, what he's created is pretty phenomenal. Right, I mean, uh, just so that you guys know, my father set the standard pretty high for all of us in our family. We're a family of seven. And what Ike did is that he, not only did he had to go a little bit beyond, not only did he go a little bit beyond what my father achieved, but actually quite a bit beyond. And what I give him a lot of credit for is because he's got three things that you need to be successful. Number one is what, common sense? Number two, you need a lot of heart. Number three, you need to have a lot of balls. Those are the three things that you need to be to be successful. And that's the bottom line. And I think uh, what I would argue to all of us here, I don't care where in the world you are today, whether in Brazil, Germany, I have actually operations in Mongolia. I do a lot of work in Mongolia. Uh, success is wherever you are. To answer your questions, you're asking me for money for VC. Uh, I think there's, like we said, there's a lot of money uh, in Brazil right now. By the, I think the, for instance, I'll give you an example of a story, personal story. The Brazilian National Development Bank, BNDS, they're great. Uh, their issue is that they have more money than they have ideas. They have more money than they have idea. In Brazil, as a Brazilian, if you go and knock at the door at the Banco Nacional de Desenvolvimento and you have a great idea and you present it to them, they will fund you if it's a good idea. It takes six months, but they're great at doing this. Right? It needs to have a Brazilian twist. Whatever story you're telling, it needs to have a Brazilian uh, uh, twist to this. But don't you think building here, Silicon Valley, where we are, uh, a, a, a fund focused in Brazilian institutions, Brazilian companies, but not BNDES in Brazil, but uh, here in the Well, here then in to extend on this, one of the issues that the Brazilian National Development Bank has is that we in Brazil need a lot of technologies for our natural resources. Right, so for instance, I'll give you an example. I'm working on bringing Suncream to Brazil. Suncream, for those of you that don't know, it's a company that produces solar panels, and they're able to do it out of quartz into uh, silicon panels. They're able to reduce the cost curves in an industry by significantly. Instead of it being 92 cents, it's like 45 cents. So they can actually really, through that technology out of the Silicon Valley, they can do this. What the Brazilian National Development Bank needs to do and what they ask me to do is build exactly that so that Brazilians can actually further the research in cash-starved companies here in the United States or in Europe, so that these technologies get then brought back to Brazil so that those natural resources such as quartz, methanol, etc., then get developed further. Because for Brazil, it's a problem when research stops in wherever it is around the world. Does that help? Absolutely. Maybe? Yep. So now the BNDS is a fantastic institution, super meritocracy, and I'm very proud of that organization. It's a really great organization. Yes. Well, thank you, Harold. It's been uh, a great presentation. Uh, Marguerite as well. It's been great for the Rock Center. It's a bit different. We usually focus on corporate governance, but this is great as a regional a vision of, of what's happening in Brazil. One of the questions I have, and, and you know, I said earlier when I, I made the introduction, I'm, I come from Chile, and one of the things that we're seeing now in Chile is problems with social inequality. Uh, now, Chile is 17 million people. Brazil is 200 million people. One of my sort of questions with Brazil is, at what point in the development this is going to break out, right? We see, and this is a question I think for everyone to think about. I mean, it's great to grow, but growth also brings 
different problems. And I think Brazil has a big population and they'll have to deal with this. So this is maybe a tougher question, maybe not so optimist, or could be optimist, but it's something that we have to think as well as from the part of developing and growing and, and how the society is going to move with that growth. Um, you know, it's a tough answer. It's a tough answer, but here's an answer for all of you. All of you who are going to Rio now, what I would like you guys to do is go buy a computer. Let it be like maybe a $200 Kindle high definition one or those 200 buck computers. But take the computer as you visit Brazil, donate it to a local charity. Why? Because your donation goes uh, uh, three times the extent. Because in Brazil, taxes are high. So if you buy it in Brazil, it's at least double or triple so expensive. So my, my suggestions to you is I believe in uh, one computer per child. I think it's an initiative here in Silicon Valley. When you guys go to Rio, take a computer with you and give it to somebody who can you know, evolve because of it. Right? I mean, that's my answer to that. It's a tough problem. I think we still have a long road to go, but we all can make a difference. I've always been doing this. Every time I go to Rio, I always leave my laptop behind. And not for my brother, but for kids. My, my, my aunt, she has a 3,000 uh, uh, school. She lives in a city called Niterói. It's right across the bay from Rio. And she's a nun. As a matter of fact, three of my aunts are nuns. I got good relationships here, right? <laughs> but in her school, the way they do it, 1,500 of those kids, they pay because they come from middle uh, class families. The other 1,500, they get sponsored by those other 1,500 uh, kids. And she's been very, she's done great work. I think it's education, education, education. It's critical, it's a must. You, well, we know this, right? So that'd be my answer. Great. So maybe we'll open up to questions to the public, and I'll just we'll just pass along the microphone. So I'll go over there. The first question. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Raj Patel. I'm an American that's really focused on entrepreneurship in Brazil. And uh, about nine months ago, I went to São Paulo for the first time, and I landed in São Paulo because my impression coming from Silicon Valley was the entrepreneurial ecosystem was more well-developed in Sao Paulo than Rio. But I'm wondering if you can maybe sell me on going to Rio to build a startup instead of Sao Paulo. Well, his first mistake was going to Sao Paulo, right? <laughs> yeah, who's from Sao Paulo here? Raise your hands. Do you guys all agree with me? You see, they all agree. <laughs> okay. uh, I don't need to say anything anymore. Uh, <laughs> No, I tell you this, guys, uh, Rio right now is a center for oil. I mean, if you think of Houston and Rio, think of them as uh, twin sisters. My, I think what Margarita, where is she sitting? I think she's doing a great job because what we need to do is we need to build a bridge between us here and Rio de Janeiro. Guys, they're spending $200 billion. That's a lot. That's, a, that's quite a bit of money, right? Guys, there's money there. Seriously. So, and high tech is needed. I don't see why Sao Paulo, I, by the way, I know of a lot of startups in Sao Paulo and Rio. Uh, I think startups nowadays, they can be successful both, way, you know, either city. That's, that's just my belief. Okay. okay. Thanks. And like as I said, you can be successful wherever you are right now. I do a lot of work in Mongolia. You can be very successful in Mongolia as well, wherever, right? Wherever, the, wherever you are, that's where success, where you'll find it. It's just, it's really about you and what you bring to the table. Who has a question? Someone has a question right here. He, he knows my father. He knows my father for the last 40 years. He's worked with my father. He's going to put me on the spot. Right? Okay. Hey, Harold. Uh, it's yes. a very simple question. Where do I go to buy the phone in Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go to your local. Go to your local Whole Foods Brazilian product, Whole Foods or Dragers or Adronicos. All right. It's called Money Snacks. M A N I Snacks dot com. <laughs> I have another answer. Or come to the next Bay Brazil yes. event. Harold will bring. <laughs> They're delicious. <laughs> Howard, actually, it's a question and it's an invitation, maybe a dare, that you could relate to your older brother. Who, personal wealth, I guess, is well known. It's public, right? I don't. I can say that. Twenty billion dollars. Your, your personal wealth of your, your 
or more than that. Depends on the day. Depends on it. At least $20 billion. Yeah. After I sold my company, my, I was making some calculations. There's a thousand dollars less than this. My personal wealth after I sold my company. Brazilian guy also became yeah. successful. A thousand times less successful than, but this is a number. I'd like to go ahead and propose a dare. Based on his idea, I would write a check of a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars right now. I write it right now. If your older brother would make the equivalent a thousand times more, which is a hundred, <laughs> each we, we would start a fund. It's a hundred million dollars for entrepreneurs in Brazil. I can come up with a hundred thousand right now. I bring you pão de queijo for the rest of your life. That's my contribution. <laughs> uh, it's <a> tough crowd. <laughs> Any other questions? You guys have been great. I see you in Rio. Okay? <laughs> see you guys in Rio. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harold. We couldn't have a finish on a better note. I want to thank you all so much for being here. I want to apologize for the technical presentations, switch computer issues. I hope you forgive us for that. I want to thank you, our board members, for being here. I want to thank all of you for spending the day with us. And I also thank you. I want, I want to also thank our volunteers. So, babies, you a not-for-profit, and we count on a lot of volunteers to help us out to put together these events, to do a beautiful banner such as this one right here. So, and I want to recognize the volunteers who helped us uh, today. I want to recognize the photographers, uh, Carol and Roberta. Say hi, Roberta. Daniela, who's helping us with uh, a special uh, uh, research on entrepreneurship, Daniela Fonsetti. I want to recognize the amazing work of this artist, Soraya. Please rise up, Soraya. Soraya Smith, she created the Bay Brazil logo as well as our website. And uh, please, Angela Teodoro, uh, she's been She's been wonderful helping me out in all the events, signing people out, being there and helping us with everything. Thank you. Obrigada, meninas. Muito obrigada. And Vanessa is outside. So Vanessa also. Thank you so much. Um, and last but not least, where's Evan? Evan. Evan, thank you so much for opening the doors to Bay Brazil here. And we'll do again next year. Just about two weeks ago, uh, in, we introduced on the website, thebaybrazil.com, our way for you to become a member. You can become an individual member, or you can be a corporate supporter. There's only two links for individual member. I think it's $100 a year. And you have, you're going to be able to participate in events and so forth. You get a lot of information, a lot of benefit from it. The corporate support is only $100 a month and you'll be able to bring up to three uh, of your colleagues to events. You're gonna have your name uh, part of all the, the banners and, and emails blasts that Margarita is gonna be doing throughout the year. So please do not forget to join, join us, become a member, either corporate supporter or individual member, okay? Thank you. Thank you.